Hey guys, my name's Alyssa and I'm so excited to be with you guys tonight in this way. Of course, I know we wish we could be hanging out in person and look forward to the day we can do that again. Um, but this is what we've got for tonight. We're going to make the absolute best of it, um, worshiping Jesus together. So whether you are watching this on your iPhone or on a TV or on your computer, um, I just encourage you to engage and worship in whatever way feels most comfortable um, for you this evening. So please join me in singing. <laughs> like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God and all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so the goodness of God. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after. It's your breath in our lungs, 
will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you Lord and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you Lord it's your Lord, we thank you for this time to gather this evening. Even though we are all apart, um, we thank you for this time to bring us um, together to engage in worship, to learn more about you. And Lord, we just thank you so much for your goodness and your greatness all the time, regardless of our circumstances, Lord. We pray that you would just bless this time together. Um, let us just have an awesome time as we dive deeper and learn more about you, Jesus. We love you. Amen.
Good evening, students. We are on our second of three weeks in a series we are doing uh, that we started last week called Relationships, Singleness, Dating, and Marriage. And for tonight's panel, we are on the second of those three, which is the topic of dating. Now, if you were to open a new browser on your cell phone or on your laptop, and you Googled dating in the Bible, I'd be pretty interested to hear what you might have pop up. Because when we look to the Bible, it is filled with a number of foundational truths, but at the same time, there are still plenty of topics like dating that the Bible may not specifically speak to directly. If we were to go back into biblical times, the process of meeting a spouse had very little to do with things like compatibility, personal traits, but more so with things like family lineage and economic status. Even today, in many areas of the Middle East, dating is still something that is a new concept, and some couples can't even be seen together in public unless they are officially engaged to be married. So, while God may provide each of us um, with some cookie-cutter answers, when it comes to dating, specifically in the Bible, uh, it might still seem a little bit blurry. But one thing as we go about this discussion tonight with those on our panel, we also need to remember that God always gives us everything we need to get us to wherever it is that we go. And what I mean by that is when we look to Scripture, uh, for example, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, the Apostle Paul says, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. In this verse, Paul is reminding us that no matter what it is that we're doing, it can be used as a means to glorify God, even through something such as dating. Even if that dating relationship eventually ends, we can still glorify God through how we go about doing it. So tonight, when we go into this discussion, um, it's going to be kind of interesting to hear um, because we have a couple of different perspectives. Uh, we have a couple of perspectives from our leaders, Amy and Andrew, as well as our students, Carson and Olivia. So hopefully through this time, uh, you get to hear some different perspectives, uh, different seasons of life of this topic of dating. So last week, we talked about the topic of singleness with Peter and Emily. And one of the questions we talked about is how singleness prepares you for marriage and how, what are the benefits of singleness in preparing you for marriage. And so the first question I'm going to ask to Andrew and Amy as a married couple, thinking back to dating specifically, um, the first time that you dated someone, not even each other, did you feel like you guys were necessarily prepared to date that person? Yeah, I guess I'll start. Um, I think, honestly, there's a lot of things in life um, that no matter what you do, um, you're never really going to feel prepared. And I think dating falls under that category. Um, but I would say, like, I was a senior in high school um, when I had my first dating relationship. Um, and I mean, there were obviously, I had already seen lots of friends go through dating relationships. So, I mean, there were some obvious um, things that I knew about dating, um, you know, such as, you know, that I would be paying for the dates, um, <laughs> that I would be expected to, you know, hold hands um, in public places and things like that. So, I think on, on that level of things, yes, I mean, I was prepared. Um, but at the same time, I mean, dating is something that you're never really prepared for until you're in the midst of it. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, so my first dating relationship was in college, um, and actually it was Andrew. And so, um, so I've only dated one person, and it worked out quite well. Um, but I think in waiting, it was actually good for me because... Um, I had to learn to be content in being single first. Um, and, and that helped me prepare better because I think I knew myself a little bit better. Um, and, and I think it also set me up that I knew that being in a relationship wasn't going to fulfill all of my emotional needs. Um, really only God could do that. And so in getting to that place in my relationship with God before I started dating Andrew, um, I think just for me, set me up in a healthier 
spiritual and emotional place. Um, yeah. Cool, cool. So you can go to the next question. This is going to be for Carson and Olivia. So you both have experience dating. Uh, for some of you, it's been a little bit longer. And, but you both have that experience. And so thinking about it, being fresh in your mind, what has dating taught you so far in this process? What is something uh, that you've learned through the process of dating? Uh, for me, it has taught me a lot of things. Uh, the first thing is I've definitely felt myself maturing uh, throughout the process. Uh, so that was something that I know that my mom and dad are grateful for, my maturity. Uh, but that is something that has taught me. Um, the other thing is uh, it just gives you someone else that you can talk to. Um, obviously, I have you know really good friends that I can talk to about stuff, but uh, just talking to my girlfriend about you know the struggles that I'm going through, and then you have someone else that can uh, encourage you and support you through stuff. Um, uh, yeah, so just, you know, that support that you're going to have um, and then the maturity that it's taught me. Um, amongst other things, uh, you know, it's also helped me with my relationship with God. Uh, I know that Sarah, my girlfriend, has really um, encouraged me, um, and we've kind of, like, you know, both uh, supported each other um, in growing our relationship, which has been something that I've really enjoyed doing. So uh, those are just three things that it's taught me. Um, but you're learning something new every day with dating. You never really know everything. Um, there's no one that's perfect at dating. So, uh, yeah, so you learn every day um, and, yeah, you just kind of grow up a little bit every day. Yeah, um, so dating has really helped me realize that nobody is perfect. Um, I found myself, especially in the beginning of the relationship, really, like, comparing him to other people, um, but I realize I'm not perfect either. Um, uh, but you'll see that you'll love each other unconditionally, like, unconditionally, like, despite those imperfect things that we each have. Um, but it's also taught me, it's matured me to realize that small arguments are dumb. Uh, that's something that really stuck out to me, I guess. Um, it's a waste of time to argue um, over something dumb, and um, it's taught me ways to resolve those small issues, um, and I've started, like, seeing it in other couples, and um, I think it's helped my relationship too, um, because we both realize that those things are not worth arguing about, so, yeah. So you hit on a couple things that is gonna lead into this next question about recognizing that both of you aren't perfect, but also just thinking about some of the struggles and maybe those small arguments. Um, what have been some of the hardest things that you guys have experienced through the dating process? Um, maybe that is just learning to trust. Um, maybe that is, um, I don't know. You guys, are, you guys are the ones dating, so uh, you guys have something to say. So, um, I've definitely struggled throughout my whole relationship to put um, God first in the relationship. Um, but in the long run, it helped me realize that I should, and it's definitely brought us both closer to God. Um, and especially myself, um, and I've, I've struggled with patience as well. Um, I'm a pretty controlling person, but um, I have continued to remind myself to be kind and patient and keep my cool when something maybe doesn't go my way, or, and that's pretty much with any kind of relationship with friends, with um, significant others, but it's definitely been a struggle with um, dating, so... Yeah, there's definitely uh, two things that have been really hard uh, in our relationship, and the first one's being uh, for myself, really. You know, I kind of hold myself to really high standards. Like, I don't want to make any mistakes. Um, and so then when I, you know, do make a mistake or do something uh, that an immature teenager would do, um, you know, you just kind of, you kind of hold that against yourself, and you just want to, you know, forgive yourself and move on. Everyone makes mistakes. No one's perfect. Um, so... Uh, whether it be, you know, maybe making your schedule a little bit too busy or uh, you couldn't hang out uh, or something like that. You just want to hold yourself um, to a standard, you know, you want to be a good uh, Christian boyfriend, but you also don't want to keep yourself to a standard that you can't achieve. Um, and then the other thing that's been really hard uh, for us uh, has been uh, trying to maintain our schedule. Um, we're taking college classes. We're both seniors in high school. Um, I play ice hockey. So there's just a lot of stuff going on. So trying to make room time for each other, time for school, time for God. It's been really hard. 
Um, so sometimes it's saying no to something, you know, whether it be hanging out. Uh, so that way we would have, you know, more time on another night and stuff. So, like, I know tomorrow we were going to hang out uh, before we had to go to work, but we both decided that we probably shouldn't to do some college work so that way we can have more time over mm -hmm. the weekend. So it's hard to say no um, in that moment, but, you know, you know that's better in the long run because um, it's just better for to keep uh, your stress levels down by uh, having more time for school and for sports and for work. Um, and then uh, the time for the relationship will come too. So back to you, Andrew and Amy. Uh, as it goes about pursuing relationships, whoever with you, whoever you're with, uh, I think there can be some struggles to remain faithful through that relationship, even if you are with somebody. So, what are some things that our students should keep in mind when it comes to remaining faithful in relationships, uh, dating, but also, even though we're not going to talk about engagement, and nor do I think any of our students are thinking about that at this time. <laughs> Um, but that is something that is important even in that stage as well. I would say be the person that you want to date. Um, and so um, it's kind of holding yourself to that standard, but then also who you're dating to that standard to live up to that. Because um, a relationship is only as healthy as the people who are in it. And so... Um, if you are not um, emotionally or spiritually healthy, your relationship's not gonna be either. And the same goes for whoever you're dating. Like if they're not um, emotionally or spiritually healthy, um, then that's gonna impact your relationship. And that doesn't mean like you don't break up with them necessarily, but it's, you need to be aware of that and, and have hard conversations to, to work through that. Um, um, but when it comes from like a, a faithful standpoint, like be the person that you'd want to date. Um, for me, I would um, probably say that uh, for the majority of us, um, we will probably not end up being with the person that we first date. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> um, but I think it's easy um, in high school to kind of to think that way, and I think it's, I would say as far as remaining faithful, you have to remember that even if you're not, even if you're not necessarily uh, have the forethought right now to start thinking about things like engagement and things like marriage, that's perfectly okay, um, and that's probably more the norm. Um, but just like a lot of things in life, um, dating is somewhat about forming healthy habits. Um, so I think uh, it, it is beneficial to have some of that forethought and think about um, the way that I act now, um, the way that I treat the person that I'm dating now um, is going to help me build those healthy habits um, so that in the future um, I've, I've done that, I've created that rhythm um, of remaining faithful. Um, and I think that, that will go a long way in just creating those healthy habits now um, even though probabilities would say that, you know, you're probably not going to be with the person um, for the remainder of your life. So I have one last question for Andrew and Amy, and then I'll give you guys some uh, closing thoughts as we only have a minute or two here uh, to end. But this next question is kind of a, a silly question, I guess, if you read it um, or think about it. But it is something that's talked about when it comes to dating. And that question for you, Andrew and Amy, is... In your opinion, how long should someone date someone until they should consider pursuing marriage, if you believe there is a time frame? Yeah, uh, I, that's a very complex question. Um, and I think that really depends a lot on the age and maturity of people in the relationship. Um, I think for a lot of people, um, and that's why I say age and maturity, because it's not necessarily one or the other. Um, there are some very young people who... Um, are very mature in their relationship and may be considering it um, relatively soon. And there's other people that need a lot of time to kind of work into that maturity levels. Um, but I would say in high school, it's probably definitely not the normal um, for marriage to probably even cross your mind. Um, maybe on occasion, but um, I would say in college, it's probably healthy to at least sort of have that in your thought process when you choose, when you're beginning to date somebody, 
Um, it's good to have that forethought. Um, and, you know, I, I don't like to, I don't think I would put a time frame on it, but usually people in college, you're getting ready to settle down, you know, you're, you're going to figure out what you're doing with your life, figure out what your career is going to be. It, it's kind of a natural step um, to potentially consider that in the future. Um, so, but I still think, I mean, it, a lot of times it may take a year or two of dating to truly understand and know someone well enough um, to take that leap. Whereas there's people that are in their adult life beyond college um, that may already be in a place where they, like we talked about earlier, they really, they understand themselves really well, they know themselves really well, um, and it may only take them six months um, to find someone that they know um, will fit them well. And, and so I think it can vary a lot depending on those factors, but. Yeah, I would agree with all of that. Um, I think the only thing that I would add is not really, not a time frame um, per se, but just um, when you're in a, a relationship, typically the, the infatuation, the lovey-dovey feelings, all of that lasts anywhere from six to 18 months. And after that, things then kind of get a little more real. And, um, and part of that's just in getting to know people or know your significant other and stuff. Um, but I think sometimes it's good to kind of get through that phase because marriage is mostly past <laughs> the infatuation. Uh, you can still have feel-good feelings, but, um, but it's, it's not the same like butterflies in your stomach all the time. So good to just kind of, what is the relationship past that infatuation? Um, and the other point is also recognizing that everybody puts their best foot forward when they meet someone, when they're in a new relationship, which is great. Um, but when you're in a marriage, all of those things that were hidden um, come out. And so um, I would just advise dating long enough to start seeing those things, to know if you really want to deal with them for the rest of your life. Um, and kind of a general like rule with that is typically people can hide those faults for like a year. Um, and hopefully they're not doing that to you, but that's kind of a, a general rule of thumb. Really good stuff from both our leaders and our students tonight. Uh, I'll give you guys each 15 seconds. Uh, we're a little bit over time. Last piece of advice from a student's perspective, leader's perspective on dating. If you have something. All right, I'll go first. Uh, my, big, my big piece of advice is don't rush into anything um, when you're dating. Uh, God has a plan for you. They have the right person out there for you. Um, if you're looking to date somebody, um, you know, it, it probably won't work out. Um, but just when the right person comes along, you'll know it. Um, uh, so yeah, that's my big piece of advice. Um, don't don't like look for it, but God will God will place someone in your life that you're really gonna love. So, and when that comes along, you'll know. Um, I pretty much agree with Carson. Um, I've seen a lot of people do it. Don't just date to date. Um, it probably won't work out. Um, but God's gonna put that person in your life when it's time and um, you're going to know that and if you end up breaking up at least you knew that um, but also um, if you want to be a godly person date a godly person because um, if you don't it, you're just going to get um, taken further away from God and yeah so that's my advice <laughs> and I would just add uh, from a little bit older wiser perspective of let people speak into your life and your relationship because I know that that can be really hard um, to, to hear criticism about your relationship or about your significant other. Like oftentimes, I mean, I, I speak of my younger self um, as much as any of you guys. Like it's hard to hear negative feedback, but... Um, but it's so important because it can save you a lot of heartache. Um, it can prompt hard conversations to have with your significant other, but necessary good ones that lead to, to growth. 
um, not just in you or them, but also the relationship. And so, um, so yeah, as tough as it is to hear feedback, I would actually encourage you to seek it out from, from mentors, trusted adults, trusted friends even, um, and just, just be able to, to try and have an open mind and hear that because it will, it will save you a lot of heartache. Nothing. Ditto, ditto. All right. Uh, Olivia, can you close us tonight in a word of prayer? Oh, sure. <laughs> um, dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you that we can all um, come here tonight, um, whether if it was online or um, just a few of us could be here and um, talk about you tonight. I just pray that anyone that's looking to be in a relationship um, just... Um, centers their relationship around you and turns to you if they ever need anything and um, know that they can always turn to an adult if um, they need to talk about something and um, they they find that right person for them and if it's not the right person it's okay they will um, and that God has a plan for them um, thank you for tonight in your name amen amen so next week, we'll be closing and wrapping up this three-week series with our topic of uh, marriage, and we'll be talking to our, our veterans, Andrea and Brad Baker, um, who will be discussing that topic. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight, guys, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>